Uh, my name is Eric Arbay, and my talk is Hacking WordPress, Making WordPress Work for You. Um, there's my pertinent information down below. Follow me on Twitter if you want to ask me some questions. Um, so about myself, I am a WordPress developer. I've been working on WordPress since 2008, 2009, um, back when that original ugly theme was still around, the blue header, if everybody remembers that, IRC theme or something like that. Um, so I have a company called Golf Web Design. And uh, we do web development for a niche. Obviously, you probably guess what that niche is. <laughs> and uh, I'm a golf professional. My business partner and I from college, we started our company. And we focused on that niche. And we grew and grew and grew. And uh, brought me here today. I love WordPress. We use WordPress for pretty much every one of our sites. Uh, One-off sites, we use something else once in a while. But WordPress is our core. And we also do some white label web development work for uh, a few agencies. Um, marketing agencies that maybe don't have a web team and they need to bring us in for certain projects. So um, that's a little bit about me. And uh, I spend most of my days developing uh, as opposed to designing or anything else. So um, does everybody know HTML, CSS, PHP, ECMAScript 6? Good? If not, you know, there's the door. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> there will be no code touched in this, uh, in this presentation. Yeah, I'm just joking. So. <laughs> Um, so, let's dive right into it. Now, when you all saw the name of this presentation, you were probably like, oh, are we going to get into code or what are we going to do? You know, then you may have read what I wrote in the description of it and said, oh, okay, this sounds good. So, thank you all, first of all, for being here. That's great. Um, but my definition of hacking is probably different than what yours might be or what somebody else's might be. So, that's why I just kind of want to set this up right now is when I showed my account manager in the office uh, this presentation, she was like, well, I thought, you know, hackers are bad. I, th I thought they, you know, break into things and, you know, do bad stuff. And I said, well, no. I said, hacking is basically manipulating things. And I looked around the Internet a little bit and uh, tried to find a good definition of what hacking is. And it was pretty funny. The best place I found the greatest definition of it was uh, Urban Dictionary. <laughs> Funny enough, yes, I cited Urban Dictionary in a talk, yes. But <clears throat> they had a really good definition of it. So um, I like how they said a hacker is basically an expert at programming and solving problems. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to solve some problems with WordPress. And I, I kind of thought this was a little funny right here. They said hackers are commonly mistaken to be the bad guys. They said crackers are the ones who screw things over. <laughs> so it's kind of a different way to think about it. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. Take it for what it is. But um, <laughs> a little humor there. But, you know, basically hacking is, is taking something and doing something different than what it was originally designed to do. So I'll tell you a little story. Does anybody know what an Arduino is? What? It's an Arduino. What it is is basically it's a small computer. It's called a microprocessor. It's about a little bit bigger than the size of a pack of gum. And the Arduino lets you program it. Uh, it's, it's open source. You can program the Arduino to do fun things like open your garage door opener when you get home. Or uh, automatically, you know, you can hook up motion sensors to it. So to turn your lights on, you walk into a room. So you can hack this and, and tie it in with what they call the Internet of Things. Right? So I was like, oh, this is awesome. I was like, I know some, some web code. I know some PHP. I was like, I can probably program that thing to do all kinds of fun stuff. I said, I'm going to make myself a uh, home security system. I'm going to tie it into my doors and, and my windows and everything. And I'm going to have it alert me on my my phone once, uh, you know, once I get home and, or once anybody tries to break in or anything. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to hack the Arduino. It should be easy. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> Two years later, uh, I have a half put together security system in my house <laughs> that I have not finished yet. Main reason being, I didn't know exactly how the Arduino worked. Uh, it's programmed mostly in JavaScript or, or form thereof. And I was like, you know, I, I kind of knew it, but I didn't have the time really to dig in and learn it well enough to manipulate it. So if you know something enough to manipulate it, then you can basically hack it. So we don't need to know code here. We're not going to dive into WordPress core or anything to hack WordPress. But from a higher level, I kind of want to show you guys some, some things that you may not have been aware of before to whereas you can look at WordPress and say, yeah, I can solve this problem that I have with WordPress because it can do something that I didn't traditionally think it could do. We all know WordPress can build websites, right? Well, it can do a little bit more than that than you, you know, might think. So this is kind of my own little definition here. To hack something, you need to have a solid understanding of how it works. Then you can get creative. 
So similar to manipulating anything, basically, if you're talking to a person, <laughs> you know, human hacking, you may have heard that before. If you know how they're going to react to a certain situation, you can say certain things that are going to make them react the way you want, right? So without further ado, WordPress was used to build this presentation. Has anybody ever seen this before? Has anybody actually used WordPress to deliver their slides? I was hoping to be a first. <laughs> uh, so, so this is the, I want to give you guys an intro to how I hacked this presentation, right? I know WordPress pretty well. I know how to build custom themes. So I said, why not build my WordPress, my presentation uh, in WordPress? So I did. You can see I've got the editor up here. We're actually on my local site right here called HackWP. And each slide you're looking at is a post, right? It's just formatted just CSS, pretty simple stuff. This is the title of the post. This is the content right there. A custom theme was built. I used a front-end editor plugin, which hopefully may be built into WordPress later on, if you guys are aware of that, where you can actually, I'll just give you a live, live demo here, and hit edit post, and look at this. I can start typing and write directly on there. So as opposed to going to the back end, you know, the, the editor, and actually editing this content, I can do it right on the front end. So building this presentation was really easy for me. Once I had this theme built, it was really easy to create a new slide. I just went to new, created a new slide, gave it a title, put in my content. You can upload images and everything right here, just like you can do on the back end. So let me show you a few more fun tricks. You scroll to the bottom there, you hit update. Post is updated, and there you go. You're out of editing mode now. Also made a fun little toggle bar right there. So that's my entire presentation. Those are all my slides right there. So if I want to click and quickly go to the next one or, or to a different one, I can go there and edit it. So I thought that would be kind of fun to you know, build my presenta presentation actually in WordPress. And let me show you guys a little bit right here. I also made an alternate version. I had to play around with this. I wasn't sure <clears throat> how fun it would be to do, you know, to, to scroll through them like this, to where the next one just came right in, right? So I was like, yeah, I think the other way is a little bit better because I can actually edit the post. This way, you're just sliding through just like this. You can't actually edit the post right here because we're only on one page. It's just a carousel sliding through. So I don't want to lose anybody there with little code or any techie stuff, but oh, actually, that's what I wanted to ask everybody. How many uh, designers, developers do we have in the crowd? Awesome. Okay. So pretty advanced you know, people here. Anybody go to the newbie uh, thing on Friday, the beginning WordPress? Awesome. Good stuff. So I hope this really enlightens everybody to as, you know, what WordPress can really do. How did you get that to carousel? JavaScript. It's a, uh, basically a slider. You may have heard of sliders or slideshows. It's basically one big slider. So every post was brought into the page, and you can slide right through them. I do have it up on GitHub. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'll get that to the end. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, so I hacked it. I made it open source so everybody can download this theme and uh, you can play with it to your heart's content. Do whatever you want. So, <clears throat> lastly, um, you know, I, while I was thinking of how to build this presentation, I just started on my phone. I was like, let's just do it on the phone, right? You all have the WordPress app. I just created a brand new site right there. Well, if you don't know about it, yeah, download the WordPress app. It's great. You can edit all your sites there, whether they're on WordPress.com or locally. You can just go right there. I just started creating the slides as posts. Then I exported that content and brought it in locally. So, next. Oh, I also um, built in keyboard navigation. So you can use your left and right to go to the previous post or the next post. So, like I said, what does this talk about? We're just going to cover some simple concepts. Hopefully, everybody comes away with something knowing maybe that they didn't know WordPress could do before or, you know, just something new. Yes? Can you make it bigger? Can I, oh, yeah. Is it, is it tough to see back there? Mm -hmm. Let's try. Is that one better? Like, I don't want to get too big. Is that okay? Good? Is the one less than that okay? <laughs> eh? All right. We'll go. We'll go here. <laughs> hey, that's good feedback, though. So now I know I can update the theme on WordPress or on GitHub. So when you all download it, you can have bigger fonts. So 
maybe you guys need a, you, you all heard of an MVP. I'm recently involved in a startup. And you might need a, vi a minimum viable product to show an investor. You need something to show an investor. You can use WordPress to build that something. Maybe you have the next idea for the next eBay or Facebook or whatever you want to call it, the ebook. Oh, that was a bad example. Um, you know what I'm saying, right? Maybe you need a, you got a problem with a client's website. You need a creative solution, okay? You're like, well, I'm not sure if I can use WordPress for this. They want some kind of weird directory with uh, some random search on there. Well, WordPress probably can do it. Um, maybe you just have an incredible idea. You're like, let's see if this can work. You can use WordPress to build that idea and try it out. Get it to some test users and see if it's actually going to work. Or you just got some weird kind of problem you need to solve. Well, why WordPress, right? Why are we all here? WordPress is open source. You can do this, and you can make it freely available. You can use it for a client. And say so you want to build um, a great project management tool for a client. They can use it. If they're a commercial enterprise like Frito-Lays, which we'll get into a little bit later on, they use WordPress as their project management software. It's flexible and extendable. Everybody, you've probably already learned some really great stuff already at this conference, am I right? You guys learned some good stuff? Awesome. <clears throat> probably learned about lots of plugins that you never, never knew of existed. That's what makes WordPress beautiful. It's extendable. You can build on top of it. It's already got a great base, and you can keep adding to it to make it do additional <laughs> things you want. Right? Does anybody use WooCommerce here for a, a shop? Exactly. So WordPress is you know, kind of baked right in. You can just add this plugin on top of it and have an entire e-commerce site up within minutes. The community around it, like I said before, everybody here, the amazing community. So how do we go about this? Let's say you've got a great idea in your and you're like, maybe WordPress could be used for this. Maybe it can. Well, dive right into the codex, right? That looks easy, <laughs> right? You just, <laughs> just, you just follow those arrows, the blue one, the red one, and then you know, you're good, right? Well, no. <clears throat> you don't necessarily need to know um, how to use WordPress from a developer standpoint and exactly how it works to be able to leverage its power. If you are a developer, that obviously makes, you know, it helps helps a lot. Like to know how to build a theme like this, you've got to know a little bit how it works. But I digress. <clears throat> Let me walk you all through a few things to try to simplify how WordPress is built so that you can take that, that understanding of WordPress and apply it to other applications you may have. So the first one is the database. And I'm just going to click on this right here. Is that big enough? Everybody can see that pretty good? Okay, if we can think of the database as basically these blocks right here. Each block you could call a post. When you go into backend editor and write a post, right? That would be your block. Within that post, you hold some data. You hold the title, the content, any metadata associated with it, right? What makes it beautiful, WordPress beautiful, is that you can take that data on your website and display it however you want. If you want to sort by just the post titles, if you want to sort by the type of image that was uploaded to that post, if you want to sort by whatever metadata, by your author that you want to put, whoever wrote that post, you can on the front end. So this front end could look totally different from this front end of the website, but it pulls from the same database. Does that make sense? So these, these are like your building blocks right here. Your database, all the data that's stored, it can just be easily manipulated on the front end. So. Skip back here, as well as some of the other metadata you may have, you know, seen. You all know about categories, tags. You can create custom taxonomies. So if you've got a list of, you know, books, you can classify them by author. Things like that. The next thing that I think is crazy powerful, especially if you're a developer or have ever tried to hire a team of developers to build a site that has user management. User management can be pretty tough when coding from scratch. You have authentication, a lot of security issues. We all know right now that WordPress, right, you, your sites may have gotten hacked at one point or another. Somebody may have gotten in through somebody's weak password somewhere along the line. Well, WordPress has a lot of things in place, and they're always updating to you know, combat against that. But <clears throat> the fact that it's already built in and does what it does opens up all kinds of doors, in my opinion. 
if you want to create a membership site, if you just want to pass or protect a site, if you want to build an entire site just for yourself to track your workouts that nobody else can see, you can do that. You can put it out on the web and have it completely pass or protected. So lots of different, oh, the other thing really here, big thing is roles, is having a user, a subscriber, an administrator, an author, so when they log in, they can only see certain things. So if I'm an admin, I want to be able to log in and see everything, right? Well, if you're a subscriber, maybe you only want them to see just the posts or just you know, X amount of content on the front end. And then finally, one more, a little bit more advanced, is the API. Is basically WordPress can push or pull. You have content stored in your database and your WordPress site. Maybe you need to use it over here in this application. You can pull that data from WordPress because of the way it's built and structured. It provides several feeds. If anybody's ever pulled in their Twitter feed on their website, works in a similar way. If anybody's ever pulled any other RSS feed onto their site, it works in a similar way. So you can basically access that information, do what you want with it, wherever else you want with it. So when hacking WordPress, start with the plugins. We get a lot of clients that come to us once in a while and they say, guys, I want to build a password protected site that has all my videos on it and I want to charge people for them to watch those videos. We get that all the time. Some people might be like, well, how should I build that? I don't know. Well, there's a few plugins already built exactly to do just that, right? So I'll walk you through just a few, few of my favorite ones here, a few fun ones maybe you didn't know about, maybe you knew before. And we're going to work on these. We're going to work on those kind of live. I've got another tab here with all of those already up. So WooCommerce, has everybody heard of WooCommerce? It's a great shopping e-commerce plugin. We used it for our startup that we recently launched and works fantastic. You can customize it. You can do whatever you want with it. Funny story, you know, to speak at WordCamp, you have to submit two talks. My first choice talk was about WooCommerce, was about speeding up WooCommerce. This is my second choice talk. Not that I'm less excited about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. Maybe they didn't want us to speak about WooCommerce. That's cool. But um, so I'm still happy that I got to speak about this because this really was outside of my box. You know, I'm, I'm usually developer, code, stuff like that. To do a presentation with no code is kind of refreshing. It's kind of fun. Hope you all are having a great time, too. <laughs> so, so next, um, WP Project Manager. You can turn your installation of WordPress into Basecamp. Does everybody use Basecamp or heard of Basecamp? I use it. It's, a little, it's about 100 bucks a month. You get the whole suite. Basecamp is basically a project management suite where you can log in, assign to-dos, upload things, have discussions right on that website. Your clients can also do the same. You can give them access. They can upload documents for you, pictures, images, videos, all types of things like that. We'll get into that a little bit later. But a free plugin lets you do that right out of the box. Saves you $100 a month right there if you were thinking about using Basecamp. There you go. App Presser. This is kind of neat. I've never used this. Has anybody ever used this? No? This lets you use WordPress as the back end of your app. They'll package it and everything, submit it to the App Store, bam. Your WordPress, your WordPress website is an app in the iTunes App Store. Really neat. I've never used it. I've seen really good reviews on it. Uh, you do have to pay for it. This is a, a paid plugin. But again, leveraging the power of what WordPress can do. Yes? All right. Would a typical usage case for that be duplicating your website in a mobile friendly version, or would it be to have a standalone app? It would, it would usually be a standalone app. We've, we've actually dealt with that before. A couple years ago, my company, Golf Web Design, we tried to submit an app to Apple that was basically our website. We built it from scratch, and it was basically kind of like a marketing tool, if you will. It showed everything that we offered, pricing, things like that. Well, uh, iTunes, Apple, they denied the app from being approved in the App Store. They said because it was just more of a marketing piece. And we were like, well, what about like the IKEA app? That's like their brochure on an app. That was approved. You know, they still made the case that we couldn't do it, and they, they shut us down. I'm sure IKEA's got some pulls somewhere or something, but <laughs> um, they, <laughs> that, that was, yeah, yep, exactly. They got some money. So, uh, so yeah, that great question though. But this would be more used probably in a case where if you want to create users on your app, 
um, collect information from people, have them sign up, you can do that. It does require like a persistent um, connection, whether it's Wi-Fi or data connection. You can't use it offline. So that's one of the caveats here. But yeah, I'd definitely use it in more of a different type thing than just a duplicate of your website. Um, wish list member. This is kind of neat. We've used this before. It's a password um, protected um, plugin, basically, that turns your website into a paid content website. People can log on, pay a monthly fee or a one-time fee, and have access to certain content on your website. Very powerful. Has anybody used that before, or a version there of that? Yep. Do they, is that the one that they obfuscate the code? Yes. Wishlist does obfuscate the code. Right, right. Because if you, if you need to look into it, you, you Correct. Can Correct, and that, that's kind of their model that's paid for. There are a few others out there. Uh, I have the links in here. You need to check that out. Simple intranet. This is pretty neat if you want to create like an intranet for your company, just a message board, news, upcoming things for your uh, employees. Really neat little plugin. Gravity Forms, Ninja Forms, Contact Form 7. We'll get into those a little later. Forms can really do some very fun things and useful things on your website. RSS aggregator, you can turn your website into a social stream. If you want to bring in all your content, if you want to bring in content from a whole bunch of other news sites, easy to do, free. BuddyPress, does anybody use BuddyPress right now? A couple. I like BuddyPress, it's pretty neat, it's a really cool concept and I think it has very good uh, uses for certain applications where you might need to form a small community for a, a niche, for a real tight niche thing. BB Press, pretty neat for forums. I've never used it personally. If you need a forum on your website, it's great. Event Espresso, I've used this before. This turns your website into basically a event registration ticket management. It says right there what it does. It's really neat. It's paid for, obviously, but what it does, it's really neat. It turns your WordPress website into a complete event registration. Basically, you can turn your website into like Eventbrite, if you've ever used that to register for events. Event Espresso. Oh, it does have a free version. Okay, great. Perfect. Then you've got WP Product Review. I just thought this was kind of interesting. I've never used it before, but you can turn your website into basically a product review. It's got stars and stuff and all that. It's already built in for you. Kind of fun. Now, we'll get into more of the developer um, version of, of plugins that really extend. And these are ones I'm excited to show you a little case study of a project that we worked on where we used advanced custom fields to make WordPress into a completely different site. This is, if you are comfortable with code, building custom themes, this is where this type plugin would come in. The same for the next two I'm about to show you. Types, it's very neat. It lets you create custom uh, post types, all from the back end of the website. So there's not, it like kind of saves time for developers for, in terms of code. But if you're like kind of like, ah, I know a little bit how to hop into the index.php file and do some things, this could really help you. And then you've got pods. Same type thing, a little bit more advanced but really kind of extends the functionality and the back-end functionality of WordPress. So some resources there. Check them out. Do you have a list of these uh, in, the, in the slide? Yes, I do, right there, with links and everything. I do need to post this still. I haven't done that yet. I apologize. I will do that. I'll take a picture. That little fade in, fade out, just simple JavaScript to do that. It's really easy. It's did they have 
Uh, I'll need to look into that. I don't know. I have not heard anything about that. She asked if there's any problems with the plug-in. She may have heard there may be some conflicts coming out with that. I do not know. I will have to check that out. With the advanced custom fields plug-in. I hope not. <clears throat> I use it a lot. It's great. Yes? If you're using types or pods, are you satisfied with the field types you met, or would you also use ACF with it? Um, yes. No. I, I used ACF with them. I, I used types for a project, and the types, like the custom meta fields, were just okay, in my opinion. I liked ACF better, the advanced custom fields better. Yes? Sure. Uh, when you say code required, what kind of code? Is it PHP or? It's, it's, it's both HTML, PHP. And depending how you want it to look, obviously CSS, the, the presentation view of it, mostly PHP, in order to pull that data from the database out to the front end and display it in your template or your theme. Yep. So I want to show you all a little bit of a case study. Like You're like, all right, this stuff sounds cool, this is neat, but I want to see you actually use it somewhere, something, an actual thing you've built where you've hacked WordPress and made it do something different. OK, let's get into that. Our company's called Golf Web Design. We wanted to build a CRM slash kind of like marketing research on all of our potential customers, right? There's X amount of golf courses in the United States. We want them to be our clients. <laughs> I wish they were all our clients. If they were, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> but <laughs> we have competitors out there. So we need to spy on our competitors, do our research, and say, all right, what competitors have which golf courses as clients? Who can we take? So we had an intern last year. <laughs> We had an intern last year, right? And he was a golf intern. He was not a developer intern. Uh, he's a golf intern. Went to the same college I did my business partner did. And we needed something simple for him to go in and do, do work, basically to do research on our current customer, on our non-customers, to see who's out there and, and how we can get to more clients. So like I said, it needed to be perform research, easy for the intern to follow, it had to act like a CRM because we wanted to know if he contacted them or not. We needed to make notes in here. Um, Excel, you're probably like, well, you could do this in Excel. You know, you're thinking you're just a table. You could put the, you know, the name of the course, if he contacted them or not, their phone number, who the contact was, things like that. But that was kind of clunky. It's, easy to sh it's not, not easy to share. You know, I couldn't log in at any time and look who he was you know, doing unless we did something like Google Drive or something like that. This was a more elegant solution. How are we doing on time? Oh, OK. Advanced custom fields came into play here big time. I'll show you what we did. Screenshots as opposed to pulling up the actual site. This is what we did. Each golf course was a post, right? Post information was completely modified. I'll show you that in a second. Categories were states, Arizona, Alaska, California, so on. Mandrill, if you're familiar with Mandrill, uh, it's a, something that MailChimp, one of the awesome sponsors here, released. Mandrill basically sends emails, transactional emails, on your behalf so they don't get trapped in people's spam boxes. We used comments, your traditional comments that you might write in a post. We use those as notes for each course. So you can write a little comment, and that, that would be like a little note, like, oh, I emailed so-and-so golf course today. WP Query for the coders in here was used on the front end on the page templates to really modify the look of it. So here is the back end. We've got the title of the golf course. OK, pretty simple. Now, you're probably like, where's the rest of the WordPress? Where's the editor? Well, we removed all that. Advanced custom fields is really simple. Let us do this. So first name, last name. We want to know who to contact at the golf course in an email. Phone number. Twitter handle, if they happen to have one. One checkbox to say if we sent them an email or not, like a, an initial you know, hey, we're golf web design, this is what we do, yada, yada, yada. Then we get into course details, city website URL, who their, customer, their current website provider is. We, we kind of mapped our competition and said, let's get a little drop down list of all the other web companies in our space that are our direct competitors. Put them in here. He could easily check that off, right? Pretty easy for somebody who doesn't know much about web development to do this. Attainability. We made our own little ranking system. We said, how easy is it to get their system, to get their business? You know, simple things like course type, that's necessary if they're public, private. We want to know. Oh, yeah. Did you use the repeater plugin? Repeater plugin? Not for this. No. For other things, but not, not, we didn't need that for this. Yeah. 
Yes, we use the repeater plugin, which is basically an addition to the advanced custom fields plugin. Yes. For this, you do need to know some code for the Advanced Custom Fields plugin. Their documentation is terrific on their website. There are other plugins that let you do something similar to this and will automatically spit it out on the front of the website. So this, this is a little more developer-centric, if you will. So we've got our management company. If, if the golf course is managed by a management company, there you go. Simple stuff to enter in right here. If he did want to enter in additional details, Put those right there. Real easy for us to see what he was working on. Yes? I'm just curious about your answer to her question. Mm -hmm. When you say you've got to be a coder, I'm assuming you were saying that you need to be a coder for the, uh, to output it on the team template, but not in the admin. Correct. Correct. The so admin side. side. The, admin side. the admin side, you don't need to know code to be able to create these fields and make the back end look like this. Yes. Good question. So on the front end, to make it spit out what you want it to display on the front end, which I'll show you in a second. You do need to know a little bit of code. Will the, the plugin actually uh, turn the dashboard to uh, contact contact? Does it make you look like, like that? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. There, it's, it's infinitely <coughs> adjustable. You can have radio buttons, select boxes, different things like that. It's, it's really nice. I don't want to get too much in the plugin. I more want to show kind of like the, the high level of what we did here. So, this is the front end of our website. So this is where we could do our research, right? So the intern was putting in that information in the back end. Now on the front end, we can easily go to this golf course, see what's going on here. We're like, all right, it's an easy target. This is one we want to go after. We want to try to get this course's business. Who is their current provider? Well, it looks like some custom, you know, local web shop may have done this. What course type, where they are, comments, you know, did he contact them? Did they write back right away and said, no, we're not interested? Yes, we are interested, things like that. Then we even made it so he could send an email right from here. There's a function in WordPress, WP Mail, that lets you mail emails directly from your website. Really great. This is where we use Mandrill. So it looked like it came from Eric at GolfWebDesign.com or whoever our salesperson was. So he could just put that information in, a pre kind of canned email, and bam, he was off and running. He was you know, marketing for us right away. So WordPress enabled us to do this really easily. This didn't take a whole lot of time to build. The other beautiful thing is we made it so it's easy to Google this. So all you had to do is click this button. It Googles the name of the golf course. And this is a little bit more advanced. We have, uh, there's a directory for PGA Pros where they can click that, and it'll do a search in that directory. That's not available to the public, but for our application, it was perfect. So again, we, we had a problem where we needed this tool. WordPress was able to be easily manipulated and solved our problem here. It's really great. Okay. So, next one. So we're going to get into a few basic uses here, use cases of where you can take a plug-in or do something different with WordPress. A Basecamp clone like I talked about before. I did a real quick kind of mock-up here. If anybody's seen Basecamp before, you'll know it looks somewhat similar. Colors and everything was real easy to do via CSS. They already had the tab set up. You have all this functionality set right in. You can add files. You can add to-do lists. All that. Free plugin. Really nice. Um, and a, a friend of mine also helped me out with this presentation. He's in the crowd today. Frito-Lay. Everybody knows Frito-Lay, right? Potato chips. They used WordPress. Instead of Basecamp, and they've, they've got money, right? They can spend $100 a month. Pretty easy. <laughs> Instead, they decided to build their own project management software with WordPress because it basically allowed unlimited file uh, size uploads. They could upload gigs of data because they had it on their own server. Whereas Basecamp would have basically said, ooh, no, we're going to have to charge you more for that. So they built their own. This is the back end of WordPress. Looks nice, right? I think this looks really clean. They customized it. They, they you know, used a few plugins to modify it, but the core there, WordPress, is ready for them to do something like this. If you want to check out the entire blog post about that, there's a link right here, but I'll let you do that. Real good write-up. How are we doing on time? Okay, almost there. Social network, like you said. Some guys in here have used it before. 
You could turn your WordPress site into a complete social networking site. People can message each other. There's a lot of different applications, if you think outside the box, of how this could be used. Yeah, it's really hot in here. Oh. Yeah, would you mind? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Whew. I thought it was just me. Hot crowd. It's a hot crowd tonight. All right. Jimmy Fallon, hot crowd? No? OK. <laughs> All right. Next one, membership site. We've talked about this before. Like I said, these are the two plugins right here, protecting content. There's free plugins as well that will let you protect content. If you just want to say, even on one page, all right, only certain users can see this, but other users can see this content. There's a lot of different applications in where that may come in really handy for something you're trying to build. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is a little better already. Thank you. Next one is the back end for an app. I told you about this before. This is really neat. If you want to take the content from your WordPress website, use it in another application, just pull in certain things. I sat in on a Backbone demo yesterday, or presentation, uh, for developers, obviously. But that showed you how you can take just raw data, your post data, from WordPress and use it in specific applications. This is where I said the part of getting creative with what WordPress has to offer. Finally, user submission is very important in any kind of dynamic application you're trying to build, right? You want to collect data from people. You want to collect information from them. If you want them to fill out a nice survey so you collect all their data, and that also registers them as a user of the website, right? There's probably a lot of ways where you're thinking, oh, I had this idea for whatever, a gardening club. I don't know, something that you want to build. This is, you know, these plugins would be perfect for that. And final thoughts, clocking in at 1.39 p.m. Um, one thing WordPress can't do is get smaller. WordPress is what it is. It's, it's pretty big. It's got a large you know, file size already, relatively. Um, other, like smaller blogging platforms or just one simple HTML website. So my point here is if there are things that you want to build that don't require WordPress, maybe they just require two files. That's all you need. You don't need tons and tons. You don't need something big if you only want to make a small little thing. So we always try to stay focused when we build websites, and adding lots of extra fluff just for the sake of adding it is not worthwhile. So in closing, I know I've talked about this already. Basically, do your homework. See what you're trying to build. See if there's already a plug-in for it. I know so many times we've had clients ask us for something that there's already a plug-in for instead of trying to build it from scratch. Saves a lot of time and a lot of headache. So that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Question. Sure, yeah. The question was how can you use WordPress to basically create a wiki of links? to save, maybe you've looked across the web instead of bookmarking them, you can definitely do that. If you want to do a local version of WordPress or a separate website, you can use posts, you can use a custom post type, and you could use the advanced custom fields plugin to modify it. So when you go into the back end of the post, it could be just the title and a one spot to paste that link. And on the front end of the website, it would just have that list of links running down. You could categorize them so you could easily filter and say, oh, here's my list of links about development or about design or things like that. Absolutely. No. No, the question was with the Basecamp plugin, do you need to know any code to use that? No. That was very easy to use. Very easy. Yes, yes. They do have a, a paid version, too, that has additional features, but it's not, it's not a monthly fee. It's like a one-time. Yep. Mm-hmm.